Okay, so we're compositing the creature in. We've created an overlay layer that helps sync the creature in. But our creature is still a smart layer, and now we want to play with just the direct adjustments with color balance and with levels. So I'm going to right click on my smart layer creature and I'm going to rasterize. This is just one option. I still have my other creature options, right? I'll leave those as smart layers for now. Now that it's rasterized, I can go to image adjustments and play with the levels. Now levels adjustments can be really extreme, right? Really brighten, really darken the midtones. And I say I always play with the midtones first. But here we're looking for subtlety. We're looking for just a small difference that matters. And a, a lot of the time we're looking at limiting how bright our creature is. And that just helps. And you don't really know what will help until you see it. Now that's too dark, but that's too bright, right? So limiting the highlights a little bit. You can also try limiting the shadows on your creature a little bit. That doesn't seem to, to make sense for, for the foreground where I am. Maybe I'll just limit them at the tiniest bit. And I don't want to intensify the shot. Oh, maybe I do. Interesting. Yeah, so you just you don't know what you want until you see it. So you play it back and forth. And then, of course, at the end, you just hit Command Z. And you see if that helps sync it in a little bit better. And it did. So that's just the lights and darks. Next, we go to the color. And my color is already pretty close to the environment. But how can I bring it out more? Again, you just have to play with the subtlety. So I'm going to start with midtones. I'm going to start by pushing the midtones a little bit cooler. Oh, and that's, that's already helping quite a bit. And if I go too far, well, then it looks weird. But remember, we stay close to the middle. and we'll recognize what we're looking for. It's tricky, we want our creature to fit the lighting and feel like it's lit by the same temperature as everything else, but we don't want them to completely disappear either. So it's not about making your creature blend in, it's about making it you know, seem right. <laughs> so I'm not trying to wash my creature out, basically. Now I can go to highlights, and I tend to uh, alter the highlights, always move those a little bit to one side and then move the shadows to the other. So I'm going to go a little warmer with the highlights, and I'm going to go a little bluer with the shadows. And let's see if that makes a difference. That's what I had. This is with the color balance. So it made everything sharper. And it definitely sets him in the rocks. And look at his feet now. They all just feel very believably in that canyon. All of that is working. Okay. Um, what I don't love so much is that there's so much sharpness on my creature. So what I can do is I can create a gradient overlay. that is just for my creature. And I can do this in a few ways. The easiest way is to actually take your creature layer, use your magic wand, select the empty space around it, right? With contiguous turned off for any undercuts. Then say select inverse. So now it's selecting all around your creature. And then make a new layer above your creature and then edit fill that new layer with 50% gray. So you get basically a gray cutout of your creature. It's like you've stamped it out of gray paper. Right, there he is. Then hit Command D to deselect, and then change that to overlay mode. And now you can dodge and burn on your creature, where it will perfectly sync to the edges of your creature without ever having to change the pixels of your creature. Because what happens when we dodge and burn, we overdo it and we lose pixel definition. So I'm going to call this my, my creature gradient overlay.
And then after this, the last step is just dodging and burning. So this allows me to burn my creature where I think it needs to be burned and dodge it. I haven't dodged yet on one of these overlays because so I haven't needed to. So I'm going to dodge the midtones and bring the lighting. This is also how you can change the direction of the lighting a little bit on your creature. You can't work miracles, but you can make it kind of fit the environment a little bit better. Okay. Like so. Now, notice I can't do anything outside on my gradient overlay for my creature because it's only gray pixels that can be affected. But if I wanted to change the rest of the environment, I can use my landscape gradient overlay. What did I do? <laughs> Turned off a lot of things. All right. I can use my landscape gradient overlay and I can dodge in things like breath. So let me, I'll just make it really extreme so you can see it. I should probably save my work because my computer's slowing down. So I'm going to go above 20% just to show you how you might put in some breath coming from your creature. Now this would require it to be kind of a cold environment. But I'm on my landscape gradient overlay. And here I'll just show you by putting it on normal mode. I only have it at 43%, so let me put it at 100% so you can see it. And what I'm doing is I'm dodging kind of this little cloud coming from my creature's mouth. And it's going to kind of soften out. And you can see all the atmosphere built up on top. So on your landscape gradient overlay, you can dodge and burn anything, anywhere, right? But on your creature gradient overlay, you should only be able to affect the edges of your creature. And that keeps everything nice and defined. Still in the middle of saving. So let's see how that works when I change it back to overlay mode. And it's going to be overpowering, you know, so that's why I'm going to take my opacity down. But I can also play with um, levels on my gradient overlay layer and increase the the contrast between my lights and darks or limit them. Right. It's taking a long time to save. I'm glad I saved it. And we've added a lot of um, layers back in, right? So it is important to merge the landscape layers that you can merge so that your Photoshop doesn't run as sluggishly as mine. Okay. Any moment now. Well, let me. There we go. So I'm going to change it back to overlay mode. And you can see all that kind of breath that I put in that lightens the background. And now I'm going to put it back, see how much of that I want. Yeah, about 43% is about right. Very good. So these are subtle changes, but they affect the background as well. Okay, now, atmosphere. Final step. So I've got this whole folder of atmosphere. This is it without it. This is where everything is sharp, everything's super colorful and bright. But when I add in my atmosphere layers, these are texture overlays. These are a bunch of different color filters and changes. I even added some little foreground rock elements. I have this crazy one if I ever want it. <laughs> that is kind of uh, sinking my creature. Get rid of this one. So how much of that do I want? Which aspects of it do I want? I'm going to take this down to a much lower opacity. You get to decide how much you build, you build in. So I'm going to go and just play with these opacities. And 
And if I want to show something more physical in terms of breadth, I can do that with a texture overlay. So what I can do is take a whole bunch of this cloud, and it's going to lasso around where it would come out of the mouth. It's kind of jokey looking, but I think it will work. Lasso that, duplicate it. Then I'm going to make it at a higher opacity, right? And I'm going to set it, let's see, normal mode. And now I am going to play with its levels and brighten it up. It doesn't have as much texture as I want in there, but there's some. Bring that out. A little bit of cloud, right? I can soften its edges by Gaussian blurring it. It's going to have kind of a blue misty belch. Soften its edges. Then, of course, because it's on its own layer, I can warp it, make it fit into his mouth a little bit better. Spread it out at the top. The wind's got it. Stretching up, up, and away. And then I can play with my eraser at a low opacity because I've already softened the edges really big. And I can knock it back. Of course, this requires my computer to be a little faster and more responsive than it's wanting to be. And then, of course, I can just play with the opacity and the layers layer modes to blend it in. So maybe this has altered my story a little bit, but if I keep playing with this, maybe all these colored clouds are coming from these kind of creatures, right? So this is a very gaseous planet because the mushroom creatures have a lot of flatulence. And it gives me whole new things to animate. But this is how you can show lots of interactions with the environment, like dust clouds that your creature is kicking up. I'm going to use my stylus here. Photoshop is freaking out on me because it's lagging. So let me be a little bit more direct. my eraser. A little trace of this kind of blue vapor, you know, escaping from his mouth, and then I can Use opacity, sync that in. I can use um, you know, different layer modes, like screen will do a nice job, kind of lightening everything behind it, or color dodge. Or soft light, I often like. You get to decide if they make sense or not. Come on, turn it off. All right, so once you're done, you're going to do a, a quick critique with your class first or with your group, and then I'm going to show you uh, how to save it and submit it by separating out your overlay layers as well. So get it to the level you think you want it. Maybe you have some, some aspects you want to turn off and on. And share it with your group. And if you can convince them that everything makes sense, you are ready to save it as your PSD file.